Hi everyone, I'm Utkarsh Mohan and welcome to my guitar collection, the Ministry of Guitar. Let's open this thing up. Okay, we'll start off here with something very special. This is one of my keepers, a guitar that I've been playing live for a very long time. <clears throat> this is a McCarty, a PRS, McCarty 594, single cut wood library. Um, there's so many things that make this guitar special. Uh, where do I even begin? Um, of course, it's a wood library. So it's got amazing words like the plain maple, <coughs> I believe fretboard. Uh, I'm going to turn it around so you can see that beautiful plain maple neck. This is the first generation of the McCarty 594 single cut. The year that it came out, which is end 2016, early 2017. That's when I got it. Um, it's got a very nice story that my... Uh, wife or other girlfriend at the time actually fiance can't remember now fiance i should have remembered that uh she had a f she used to fly for singapore airlines so she had a flight to the uk so she went to guitar guitar uh, she traveled down from london i think guitar so not guitar guitar gak my apologies gak so traveled down to gak some distance from london and got this beautiful thing so what do you need to know about it um apart from its color which is burnt maple leaf um it is it's pretty standard it's got 5815 lt pickups a regular three-way toggle like a les paul four knobs it is basically the best 1959 style les paul that you can have um, the only change that i've made to it is i have added black uh, pickup uh, surrounds and I've also added black tuner buttons over here. Quite a beautiful guitar, um, beautiful case as well, which as you could, could have seen. Yeah, this one's staying. All right, after the McCarty 594, this is a Fender, but this is no ordinary Fender. It's a custom shop. It's a Telecaster, but I'm just going to let you take a look and then we're going to talk about it. I think, are you ready? Look at that. If that isn't one of the best tops that you have seen on any guitar, let alone Fender, let alone PRS, let alone whatever, this is just I don't know. I see plenty of nice tops. I have a lot of PRSs, private stocks, and the kind. But this thing just continues to astound me. So what is this? This is a Fender Telecaster um, custom shop, as I said. It is a special order by a Japanese dealer. And the dealer is called Ikebe. And this is not just any special order. What they did is they sourced a piece of beautiful maple from Japan itself, this beautiful piece over here, and they sent it across to Fender in the US and they asked them to use this to make this guitar. So it's a very Les Paul like Telecaster in the sense that it has binding, it has a flayed maple top, still has a swamp ash body though. The back of it is also beautiful, uh, has a beautiful plain maple neck. I don't know if I'm able to show that to you as well. Very PRS-like in appointments. And to drop it all off, it has gold hardware, which is also a beautiful touch. So I actually got this guitar in a trade. I traded a custom 24 for it. Uh, I'm happy. My friend who took the Custom 24 is also happy. 
Um, I am not the biggest Fender guy, but this is a very PRS or a Les Paul-like uh, Telecaster. So if there was ever a Telecaster for me, other than the Rosewood Telecaster, which I will show you guys in a different video, it really is this guitar. How does it play and sound? Incredible. Uh, a lot more balls or meat than the typical Telecaster, but very much Telecaster sound, very, very snappy. Um, it's brilliant. It's a very, very good guitar. So that's guitar number two. All right, time for the next guitar. This is time to get over to the Gibson side of things. What say? Yes. I feel the same about Gibson, don't you? All right. This is no ordinary Gibson, though I should open it properly. This is Pelham Blue, very beautiful, nice top tail bridge, looking nice, faded Pelham Blue, proper full carve, Gibson Custom Shop. But wait, there is a little bit of a surprise. That doesn't look like the Les Paul, and that's because this is not a Les Paul. This is what they call a Bonnerbird, which is a hybrid between a Les Paul and a Firebird. Uh, spec by Joe Bonamassa, very limited run, I think about 100 pieces. Um, I got this in Japan during a very cold winter's day. I think this was around February 2019, maybe four years, almost five years ago. Um, so the story is very interesting because I went there to buy a Les Paul Custom or a R9, one of the two. I had neither. I thought I should get one. It's about time. And I tried, I think, at least 20 guitars. Les Paul Custom, there's a silver burst, there was everything you can imagine. Bunch of R9s. I spent two and a half hours in the store. And this is no ordinary store either. It is uh, Ishibashi. Wachano Mizu's world's finest guitars. It is a Gibson custom shop only. The shop, the whole shop is only Gibson custom shop. It's slightly further down on Wachano Mizu Road um, in Tokyo. Guess what? Nothing was as good as this guitar. It just wasn't. They didn't sustain as much, didn't have as sweet a sound, they weren't as clear. Um, this kind of blew everything out of the water. Um, I like the shape of the guitar. I have to say I'm not the biggest fan of Pelham Blue. I have to say that the Les Paul doesn't look right to me without the two-piece. But there is no denying what an amazing guitar this is. And it has such a nice neck as well. It's like, it's based off a 57 Les Paul, but I would say it's really like a 59 neck. It's not too thick, but it's nice and thick. Um, the color is very nice as well. So this is number 31, I think, out of the 100. There we go. Uh, banjo tuners, just like any other Firebird. This color, as you can see in the light, and I'm going to just take it out a little bit to show you a little bit of natural light to get a sense of how this thing looks. It's a good weight for a Les Paul as well, as you can probably tell. Very nice rosewood fretboard. Um, it's a guitar that, as I said, it's amazing, to, it sounds amazing, it's amazing Les Paul, it's very very unique. I do go back and forth on whether I want to sell this or not because as amazing as a Les Paul it is, my 594 is also an amazing Les Paul and I feel that that one is much more usable. This guitar I'm a little bit scared to play because it's such a rare guitar, so you know. I'm, I may be a, I may have a huge collection, but I'm not really a collector. So this is the kind of guitar that amazing guitar, but I would let it go one day. Uh, that day hasn't come yet, but yeah, still very very nice guitar. Yes. All right, I think it's time to throw a Strat into the mix. This is of course a Fender Tweed case. Uh, this is a guitar I've had for a long time, 2015-ish, so maybe 8 years. 
and this guitar is something that has been through a lot I made a recent video on this so you may recognize it if you've been following my channel look at the beautiful candy apple red look at the beautiful gold this guitar before I arrange it so it doesn't fall down is a Fender vintage hot rod 57 Stratocaster candy apple red uh, maple neck obviously uh, some appointments which make it a vintage hot rod which I'll talk about in a second uh, extremely another extremely not a very expensive guitar but indeed a very very beautiful guitar now what is the story behind this guitar this guitar has been named Iron Man by me and the reason for calling it Iron Man is it has been through multiple falls when I bought it I got it at a massive discount because it had been through a small fall in the showroom it had gotten a dent then I hung it and then I, inst I was the one who installed the hanger which I don't I never did again and it fell down again just some few dents second time when it fell down the scratch plate broke so what I did is I decided to do a full not surgery but turn this guitar into something I had the excuse to turn it into the guitar the strat of my dreams so I put a gold anodized plate gold hardware which is both the I think it's a Goto tremolo and ratio tuners locking tuners gold parts all around let me show you in the light because here everything looks gold maybe if we just show you in the nice little sunlight you can get a sense of how beautiful how nicely that gold anodized stands out against the beautiful dark candy apple red so yeah so i got gold parts done i didn't do it myself i got it done through a wonderful luthier here called goose you see there's some better lighting from here there we go those are the ratio tuners very very nice as well yeah so what makes it a hot rod 57 is a couple of things the fretboard radius is nine and a quarter instead of a typical 57 strat which would be like um seven nine and a half instead of seven and a quarter it has a humbucker in the bridge a dimazio i don't know what it's called stacked humbucker um, it has reasonably sized frets and the neck is a very modern neck not a thin neck but not fat either it's a very fast neck so those appointments are what makes a 50 strat which is what it is because it has a nitrocellulose finish 50 strat body uh, very 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 classic that makes it a hot rod very nice guitar happy to have it probably not for sale because i've had it for a long time and i've done too much to it all right it's time to head back into PRS territory. This is a suede leather case. It's not a regular case at all. And as you can see from the little plaque over here, this is not a regular guitar at all. This is the legendary PRS there we go modern eagle one I'm just gonna try and see something recentering some camera issues you'll have to be a little bit patient with me there we go so, what is this beautiful, beautiful thing? This is, apart from being one of the most incredible looking guitars you will see, this is in charcoal. This is one of the most special uh, PRS guitars out there. So what makes this special? It has this satin nitro finish, which is unlike anything you've ever seen. You have satin finishes, but the PRS Modern Eagle satin nitro 
just makes the flame maple stand out in a way that you feel like somebody puts a crazy Instagram filter. No, this is just natural. There is nothing, no filter here. That's one. And it feels amazing as well. The second thing that makes it what it is, is this thing. This little or large thing that you would call a neck, which is made of Brazilian rosewood. Neck as well as fretboard. And we know how rare, how whatever, how exalted Brazilian rosewood is. So it lends a very distinct sound to the guitar. And then finally, you have these pickups. Those are not necessarily modern eagle. They come with different pickups as well. Um, that's not the biggest part of being a modern eagle, but these are these RP pickups. But it's really about that finish and it's about that neck. Otherwise, it's like a regular PRS, regular body, slightly thicker like a McCarty. Um, comes in either a stop tail or a tremolo. This is a stop tail version. And regular two knobs, volume tone, three way switch with coil splits. Um, this is a particularly, and of course the case and everything. This is what I call the time capsule example. Um, one owner bought originally, not me. I bought it from him a few months ago. Yes, you were not there though. You didn't join for that. And unplayed. So the thing with these guitars is that you can get, a, you can find a few of them, but the satin nitro gets a little bit, not spoiled, but gets glossed if you play it too much. So the sad thing about this guitar is that if you want one in original condition, they are almost not there. Uh, but this one is. And that's what I like about it. And I love the top and the color on this one. Um, as I, as you can guess, I don't play it that much, but I have played it enough to know that it is, it is something else. A pretty, pretty good guitar. All right. We will move on to the next one then. All right. It's time for Music Man. Again, no ordinary Music Man. It's a Ernie Ball, what's it called? Ball Preserve, whatever that's called. Not the expert in Music Man, but I am an, not an expert, but I know when I spot a good guitar. And this thing is astoundingly extraordinarily beautiful this is a purple nebula not the John Mayer nebula this is the limited run music man purple nebula uh, majesty um, not just the front but the back as well beautiful plain maple stripe um, now, what is this? It's John Petrucci from Dream Theater, his signature guitar. It is a seven string guitar because that's the version that I wanted. You can see that in a second right over here. And it has, this is the limited run majesty with the quilt maple top. So it has this astounding purple blue finish on the quilt maple top this was a limited run um, I got this new I always wanted a majesty but the regular woods just didn't do it for me as you can tell so far I'm very much a maple top kind of a person even the Telecaster I had had that so this was the obvious choice when it came to being the right um, guitar for me uh, what else? Let's show it to you in the light. Okay. You'll have to excuse my camera work a little bit. I'm trying to just figure this machinery out. Uh oh. That's not what we wanted. But we, that's what we got. Maybe we just do it this way. A beautiful, beautiful piece of hardware um, it's quite the guitar to play okay that's maybe not what you want to see <laughs> let's turn this around again yes so what I like about it is it's a very modern guitar it's very easy to play um, it has everything it has a tremolo it has a piezo 
uh, two humbuckers you can do a coil split as well um, amazing quality uh, pretty much almost I would say as much as good as PRS maybe I don't know it's difficult to say slightly different but equally high quality um, only thing for me is I'm not a music man person which means that I'm not that used to them so I find PRS is a bit more of my liking also this guitar is much thinner than you expect so the PRS is nice and thick I'm a Gibson kind of a PRS kind of a guy this guitar is really thin so as substantial as it may look when you look at it from the front from the side and when you actually play it it's a very thin guitar I think some people will love that uh, not my favorite aspect but nonetheless an incredible incredible uh, the music man to have actually for me and uh, quite happy that I picked this up new I've had it for about picked it up locally here actually in Singapore I've had it since they came out so it must have been 2019 or something mm -hmm. so I've had it for about four years now played a little bit but not played that much as I told you I prefer my PRS's but happy to have this in the collection after the very modern purple nebula it's time to go traditional um, this is kind of fate having a little bit of fun with me because I just made a video about how I don't own a Gibson R9 and I don't plan to ever own one and guess what two days later I bought a Gibson R9 uh, but there's a good reason for it which you will see when I open the case so yes this is a 2009 Gibson 1959 Les Paul reissue with one very special appointment which is the reason I bought the guitar and here we go that is a very good top it's a very very good top actually as you can just tell and that's not the reason why I bought the guitar the reason why I bought the guitar is right here it's got a factory Bixby and I always always wanted a Les Paul standard with a factory Bixby and I could never find one at the right price you know how Gibson custom shops are right they go crazy on pricing even used but just as I thought I wasn't gonna get one just as when I made a video which you can see on my channel about how 1959 Les Pauls are scamming people in a way I ended up buying one and I bought it because it was an incredible looking guitar it was at the right price I did not pay anything close to Murphy lab money or not even close actually and it had a big speed which is what I wanted so let's take a closer look at this um, it's been early days so far I just love how this top looks my god I think it's the kind of a honey burst my first Les Paul my first guitar the Epiphone Les Paul is pretty much this color that kind of endeared me to it and it's a very nice flame very three-dimensional very a lot of movement uh, what can I tell you about this guitar it's a 1959 Les Paul which means it's a Les Paul standard it's got the beautiful Les Paul tones um, nothing wrong with it uh, and again for those of you who don't know I played only a Les Paul standard for 10 years Epiphone Les Paul standard but nonetheless modeled after something like this so something like this feels like home to me even though I'm now more of a PRS person uh, early days yet I've only played it a couple of days I have uh, enjoyed it so far I've changed the strings which was not enjoyable uh, note to self don't buy more big speed guitars it is just not worth it Floyd roses are easier to change strings on but yeah it is a very very good example um, rare to have a R9 with a factory big big speed so that's what makes it special for me and good neck good weight despite the big speed everything about this guitar makes it a very very good example so I think even with Gibson if you really do want a 1959 R9 and you can't get past it which I can understand I recommend looking up some of these 2000s Gibsons All right. After checking out the R9, I think it's time to check out the guitar that probably the Gibson Les Paul has evolved into, though it's not made by Gibson. And I spoke about this in another video, but if you want the sound of a Gibson Les Paul, if you love that sound, but you're not in love with much else, 
such as the weight of it, such as the quality of it sometimes, such as the tuning stability of it. I think this is the best Les Paul you can buy today. And it's a PRS, it's not the 594 single cut that I showed you earlier. It is also a 594, but it is the hollow body version. Another beautiful, beautiful guitar. This one is not as flamey as a regular PRS guitar. It's rather flame actually. Uh, and somehow that's what endeared me to this guitar because I have so many crazy guitars with crazy flames, etc. It was good to have a no-nonsense, amazing quality, just a beautiful guitar, just an amazing guitar, kind of a guitar, with, despite being a PRS, which is, tends to be very beautiful. So, what is this? For those of you who are not familiar, this is the McCarty 594, similar to what we saw earlier with the single cut, but this is a hollow body, which means it's got a maple top and, excuse me, a maple back, beautiful flame maple again. It's got mahogany in between, in this side thing, the body, but it's a hollow body, so it just has a little bit of a mahogany block below the bridge. It's fully hollow, unlike a 335, which is semi-hollow. Unlike a 335, it also has no, no feedback, zero. And rest of the appointments are less Paul like three-way toggle near the top, uh, four knobs, but this has extra coil splits, two, two-piece bridge, a bit like Unimatic, but PRS's version, which is nicer. And uh, yeah, just a very, very nice uh, guitar. Uh, Rosewood fretboard. Now, it sounds like a Les Paul, but a better version of it. Um, it's the kind of guitar where you get all Les Paul sounds, but it has a lot more air. And not to say it's dark, in fact, it's much more acoustic-like. So you can get a much nicer clean tone, yet very close to a Les Paul clean tone. And you can also get great distorted tones, but if you put it like in coil splits and do like the middle position or something, you get a very acoustic -y sound, which no Les Paul can do. So it's a Les Paul plus plus plus. Uh, I picked up this example locally, it's again um, not very expensive used, in fact it's another reason I recommend it. This probably costs one third of what a new Murphy Labs costs, or maybe half, even less. And I would say it's better, way better, if you want a Les Paul sound. Of course some of you will just say that only Gibson is good enough, I think it's a great logo for a great company. but. Um, if I was to be objective and I have multiple Les Pauls and multiple PRSs, this is all the Les Paul you ever need. Okay, we'll move on to the next guitar after this. After the evolution of the Les Paul, maybe this is the evolution of a Strat. It looks like a nice Strat, doesn't it? Maybe something slightly off, but look a little bit closer. What the hell is that? That is a ESP. Snapper, which is the Strat version of the ESP, but no ordinary Snapper. This is a Snapper 8 string. It's called the Ride in 8 because it is a signature guitar of a guitarist called Isao from a crazy band that you may have heard of called Baby Metal. If you haven't heard of Baby Metal, thank me right now and Google it. Um, so this is an ESP custom shop built in Japan. Um, I bought it from Japan. Uh, when I went there right after Japan finally opened the doors after the pandemic. Uh, they did not allow tourists yet, but they did allow business travelers and I was one of those business travelers uh, who found my way. Um, the yen was very weak. It still is, but the prices have not gone up yet. So I was able to get this at an incredible price for an ESP custom shop. Um, just and forget the price just an outstanding guitar. I wanted an 8 string guitar with a Floyd Rose. This was the only one, <laughs> believe it or not. But I also do like baby metal. I And I wasn't the biggest Strat person, but I have to say that this guitar is just so easy to play and so reminiscent of a Strat that, yes guys, thank you, so that we can, you don't want the audience to see what this is. So. So this guitar has just been a pleasure to play and I'm going to turn it around so you get a sense of it. By the way, it is heavy, heavy as hell. I've got a, it's like a regular hard maple neck, bolt on body. It's very much like a Strat, but it's like a Frankenstrat, real Frankenstrat, not like Eddie Van. I mean, Eddie Van is a real Frankenstrat, but you know what I mean, right? It's like 
this is a true monster i mean eddie van halen's playing was a monster his guitar was like nothing else but this is truly if a, if a, if a if a if a strat mutated into something else uh what else uh, floyd rose it has uh, seymour duncan nasgul and sentient pickups uh it has a coil split a uh, beautiful ride and red which is a bit different from candy apple red it's a little bit more metallic i would say some sheens of not gold but maybe pink in it it is it is quite the thing to behold uh locking tuners everything that you can imagine and heavy as hell but incredibly easy to play if you have to try out an eight string guitar i would recommend if you can find your hand find this try it out but if you are a baby metal fan or a metal fan in general this guitar has to be there on your list if you have to own an eight string guitar maybe this is the guitar to own i don't think they made too many of them so maybe that might make it a bit difficult but what a guitar so this is one of my players this guitar stays out and i play it a lot usually I avoid making signature guitars players because you know signature guitars have a value of their own uh but this particular guitar i just like it too much so i end up playing it a lot so so be it all right let's move on to the next one all right folks let's round off part 1 with one of my latest acquisitions it is as you can tell it is a flying wee by gibson uh the case has seen better days but again as seems to be the theme of these videos this is no ordinary flying wee this is it's not an adam jones it's not that new $20000 plate thing for rich people but it is a silver burst and we make sure that the case doesn't fall off sorry just taking an abundance of caution there we go there we go yeah this is a silver burst gibson flying v um, it's a limited run from a time period you may not remember but back in 2008 gibson were making this thing called guitar of the week and a uh, silver burst flying v was part of that list one of the weeks um this one is as you can tell uh is faded so this is now green beautiful green color and uh, otherwise the back is not silver it's black so it's silver burst front on uh, i'm going to take it outside so you can get a better look at it there we go thank you for blocking the camera again um yeah so it's not a 50s style flying beat it's more of the you know it's not got the string through neck it's got the tunematic it's got just a master volume excuse me and master tone and i have an assistant over here who just wants to help me with the flying wee okay and what do i like about this guitar um of course beyond the fact it reminds you of master tone it is a superb rock guitar actually i you know it's just made for riffs i don't know what pickups are on this i don't know if these are dirty fingers or what they are i'll have to look up the actual specs but this thing is just a mean riff machine i have it in drop c 10 to 52s so even the you know the 10s make it very slinky for leads so that's part is great and the 52s are amazing in drop c even with the 24 point quarter scale length and the fretboard though you might say a uh, silver burst should have a ebony fretboard frankly this guitar with the dark rose wood with everything it just works uh, there are some guitars that are good and there are some guitars that aren't some guitars you just play out of the box and i can tell that this guitar has not been played a lot but it has seen it has seen some action and that's generally the sign of a good guitar and uh, the frets aren't used much but it's something about it it just feels like a very old very nice guitar um so i was very happy to get this recently um not on the selling list anytime soon and i have to tell you the patina of this old flying v is actually oh what do we have over there 
we have somebody else filming something else we have a clash but the patina of the old flying v no, is filming the fact that he's listening so attentively to you yes he's helping me complete this guitar collection video so what do you think hibiki do you like the flying v or do you prefer the explorer i think he's likes the flying v so yeah what do you like nika another one for the keep list for now 2008 gibson limited run silver burst flying v